Well, the UK is bracing for findings of an inquiry into events that allegedly took place inside 10 Downing Street during the country's lockdown. We're going to head on over to Tokyo where Lucy Kraft is following the story as well as other international headlines for us. Partygate sounds like so much fun, Lucy. This is not very much fun for the prime minister. Okay. Um, good morning, Anne-Marie. Today marks a new low for embattled UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, now facing allegations that his administration held over a dozen parties in violation of pandemic lockdowns. A second inquiry has been announced, this time by the police. Subject of a wide ranging internal probe set to be released shortly about accusations that a series of parties were held at Downing Street at a time when large social gatherings, whether church funerals or children's birthday parties, were banned by law. The most recent revelation as many as 30 people attended a birthday celebration for Johnson in 2020. This week could be make it or break it for Johnson, facing a possible no confidence vote. And in what's been described as an execution-style murder, a veteran Mexican journalist was killed outside her home in the border city of Tijuana. It was the second such assassination in a week. TV personality Lourdes Maldonado was shot in her car despite being under government protection. She had sought help from President Lopez Obrador, citing threats from a member of the president's own party over a labor dispute. Mexico is considered the most dangerous country for journalists in the Western Hemisphere. More than 30 have been killed in the past few years. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison once had a public WeChat account, but last year, without warning, he was suddenly kicked off. And now the account, once named Scott Morrison 2019, has a new moniker and a new owner, a Chinese IT company, although the Prime Minister's old posts, along with his 76,000 followers, are still on the account. Australian conservatives are calling foul, accusing the Chinese Communist Party of infringing on free speech. The new WeChat account owner argues it paid for the privilege, fair and square. Anne-Marie, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the Chinese representative who was handling the prime minister's WeChat account, and much remains unclear about how the account suddenly changed hands. For its part, WeChat's owner, Chinese tech giant Tencent, denies charges of hacking. Yeah, a lot of questions there, Lucy. Thank you very much. Thank you.